Welcome back everyone. It's time once again for the White Gloves of Destiny. We've got Rohan Francis, cardiologist, medical influencer, YouTuber. <laughs> Rohan is going to close his eyes and then the gloves are going to choose a card from the Royal Society card catalogue. Whatever he pulls out, we're going to go downstairs into the archive and have a look at. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Here we go. Okay, we're into this drawer here. What have we got here? Hugh David Griffith to Dr. Lind, account of the earthquake. You got an earthquake in 1800. Oh, okay. We'll get Keith Moore, head librarian, just to come in and do a call slip for us. Yeah. All right, now just in case that's a dud, you do a second pick, a yep. provisional, and we'll also go and have a look at that. But okay. that's, your, that's your main one. Go right. again. Uh, let's, let's go again. All right. Okay. Go this side, this side. Going right this time. Okay. Ooh, interesting. I'll go to the back this time. Near the back. Oh, man. Like this one. Oh dear. Latin. Johann Friedrich Weidmer, 1738, letter accompanying two of his printed tracts. Latin, but translated by Green. What do you reckon, Keith? Well, it's uh, it's the lucky pick, so, no. you know. <laughs> All right, let's go and have a look. Okay, let's right. go. We want uh, Decade 11, which is just here, and Paper... One, two, six, which is going to be right there. That's a big one. So that's your pick, if I okay. can give that to I'll you. Hold on to that. Uh, so that's volume 20. Ah, so that's a loose box. That's mm -hmm. Shall be good. Take that. Pop that on the shelf. Uh -huh. And we're good to go. Great. All right. We've come downstairs, we've pulled the papers out, Keith's found them, we're going to have a look. I'm going to make the call, I want to see the provisional first, because I think that's going to be more boring, and then we'll look at the earthquake afterwards. Yeah, yeah. more boring, it's a relative term. <laughs> Let's see. Let's have a look at this provisional then. The okay. Vi Do you know so, who this person is? Uh, I don't. If Keith doesn't know who it is, you're in big trouble. Oh dear. Because <laughs> Keith knows everyone. Yeah. Uh, see, that is interesting. You were so close. You were so, so close. So we could have had... That's a letter by Albrecht Dürer, one of the great German artists, uh, and a little monogram of Dürer. But you didn't pick that, I'm afraid, no, so I'm going to put that away. Well, just dangling in front of yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not that impressed by it anyway. It's, it's in a nice, um, it's a nice glass box. Case. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which does give, imbue it with more importance. It does. <laughs> yeah. oh. All right. All right. So number 33 is the biggest one. We were warned it was going to be in Latin. Yeah, so it's entered into the letter book, 13th of April, 1738. Number 33, and this is a much, much later transcription. I don't know who actually did this, certainly 20th century, but you should be able to read that quite well, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most celebrated, sir, I submit to you enclosed here my thoughts about Parhelians. What is more, I have not hesitated to inscribe these same in your own name. I fear you may think that I have acted too boldly in not having shown proper reverence for your judgment and that of all your famous society in a matter so important and full of uncertainty. I don't know if he's going to get to the point. Nor do I conceal the fact that several of the hypotheses which I employ do not all satisfy me as yet. <laughs> There's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of butt covering. I, know that, that's, <laughs> I beg you receive these pages kindly, dedicated to you. However, I naturally have the greatest feelings of anticipation still for Halley's astronomical tables. This is where I think the White Gloves of Destiny have been in action here, because he's referencing Halley, and you have a link to Halley. Deeply tenuous. Yes, we, I went to the same school as Edmund Halley. So, um, Those so gloves are magic, Brady. <laughs> oh, wow. They're tingling. Yeah. I can feel them tingling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is... Uh, further removed because it's not Halley, it's just a guy excited about Alan Halley's son. Well, <laughs> but, uh, we'll but, take what we can get. Yeah. What school was that? St. Paul's in, in London. I'm going to call it Dad. Dad. Okay. <laughs> it was a Dad. Dad. Could have been Albrecht Dürer. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Can't right. win them all. Let's go to the earthquake. I've got hope for that. Letter Papers 11 is number 126 in here. Oh, look at the wall. Look at what you could have had. Why didn't you pull Can't these ones know. out? Look at, that. Worth, worth. Look at that! Oh, so hey, hey, close. don't don't prejudge. Let's let's see what mine is. Mine could be oh. quite incredible. Oh. Could be the jewel in the crown here. Well, here we go. What does it no, say? No, that's one two four. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, one two six. Here we go. Dear sir, we were alarmed here this morning with the 
smart shock of an earthquake and it occurred to me that a detail of the few and imperfect observations I was able to make upon it and what I would collect from others might not prove wholly uninteresting. <laughs> not wholly uninteresting. <laughs> Double yeah. negatives way back. I'm actually starting to feel a bit of hope about this now because we're going to have like an I mean, amateur account of an earthquake. I was awakened from a sound sleep about half past five o'clock this morning, Wednesday, by a loud noise resembling the crash or fall of buildings. And before I could raise myself to ring the bell to inquire into the cause, I plainly perceived the bed to shake under me, which was instantly followed by a clattering of the windows and the rattling of the handles of a chest of drawers which stood in the room and seemed to totter on its feet. This was succeeded by a rumbling noise like the rattling of wagons or he heavy ordnance over a pavement. Sounds like the bin men on my street at five o'clock in the morning, yeah. I mean, I think that's basically what he's saying, isn't it? <laughs> Have we ever had a guest on Objectivity who was better at reading the old writing than this <laughs> nope. man? Nope, that's... that's... I, I am super impressed by how <laughs> you are reading this stuff. Something to do with physicians and prescription yes, writing? Or yes, yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> of course, the bad handwriting. <laughs> anyway, as you were, I'm just, I'm very impressed. Oh, thank you. Good. At least I've redeemed one, yeah. <laughs> one aspect. I had nearly reached the windows before it had entirely ceased and was not aware of any particular change or appearance in the atmosphere. I examined Fahrenheit's thermometer as soon as I could dress myself. You can't examine the temperature undressed. You don't, you don't want so, to he was, so he was nude up until this point? He was wearing his bed clothes. Oh, yeah, please, right. please, please. That's scandalous. And found it at 47 and three quarters, much the same as it was overnight. The poultry in the yard? The poultry in the yard were exceedingly distressed by it, particularly the geese and, and ducks and some pheasants. <laughs> I have in confinement expressed their alarm by violent screams for some time after the noise had subsided. This is what I love about these old documents. There were a bunch of geese and ducks that 220 years ago got a little bit alarmed by an earthquake mm. and did a bit of quacking. <laughs> 220 years it's, later, it's committed to history, we're reading yeah. about them. No, that is amazing, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be really up there with the big science. <laughs> it's not big science, but that's, that's why I love it. Like, yeah. who would have thought? Who would have thought? Those yeah. geese were immortalised. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, they were. Mm. No, no swans, though? No, no. Well, swans are famously unreactive to oh, earthquakes. Right, okay. yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, no. The pheasants, on the other hand. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? That letter's all right. I liked it. Yeah. I liked it. I thought it, was, it had a bit of character. It had charm. Yeah. Yeah. It had the human touch. I well, think poultry, or possibly poultry. <laughs> all right. Well done, well done. I'm kind of full of admiration for a lot of these uh, early doctors because, you know, they, they were really figuring this stuff out for the first time. And a lot of these, this kind of era in particular, they didn't really have any effective therapies for the majority of things. So really all they had left is just, just to describe what they're seeing as, as, as best they could to just further the, the collected body of knowledge.